purposely. Your life, God's purpose. Listen at purposely.com. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Gospel Tech Podcast. My name is Nathan Sutherland, and this podcast is dedicated to helping families love God and use tech. Uh, You might be able to hear from my voice. I I don't know what it sounds like to you, but uh, I've just gotten over a pretty intense cold uh, that caused me like four days of effective mutism. Uh, I, I lost my voice entirely. I powered through a talk Thursday, Friday, I guess three talks, Thursday and Friday. Excuse me, and then uh, and then was it didn't have a voice to even like squeak out Saturday, Sunday, Monday, uh, and I'm just getting it back. But I'm so excited because this podcast uh, allows us to talk about some important things. So I'm going to make it short. Forgive me. Uh, I am on antibiotics and all sorts of amazing medicines. Praise the Lord uh, and. Want to make sure that I am saving my voice because I have another three talks this weekend. So, uh, with that in mind, we're going to talk about being intentional with our time this holiday season. Uh, the intentional time really comes out of four areas. I want us to be intentional to be amazed, intentional to be relational, intentional to be with the Lord, and intentional to prioritize, or I guess intentional to be intentional <laughs> would be the way to say that. Uh, and that this just comes from what the Lord is doing in my heart. Uh, this last, I mean, month, if you go back a month from today, exactly, uh, we have had all of the great things of life. We've had school, uh, which is an amazing blessing that we have loving teachers who are uh, encouraging our kids and being other adults that speak in to the lives. We go to a Christian school that believes the Bible and follows Jesus and isn't perfect, but like the people there don't just see our kids as buckets to be filled. And if they get enough knowledge into our kids, somehow our kids will be good. Like that's one of my frustrations as a former middle school teacher in the public schools is sometimes we see education as a way to like perfect a kid through knowledge. And that's not a thing. Like they're not tabula rasa. They're not just blank slates. As long as you write enough good info on a kid, they become good. They're little broken heathens. And if you fill them enough with enough knowledge, that knowledge makes them powerful, but it doesn't make them good. Like Hitler's problem wasn't that he didn't have enough German classes. Like his problem was he was evil and gifted by God to be freakishly smart and charismatic. So um, like he leveraged that horribly and effectively. That's the concern in some schooling situations is we're making these powerful humans who don't know what to do with these newfound skills, and they apply them poorly to their own demise and often to the damage of those around them. So we are very blessed in this season to have school and teachers, and we get to send our kids there and watch them grow and then encourage them and raise them up in the way they should go on ours, uh, on our side, in our home, very intentionally. And then that also brings us like, well, what else do we do that's important? Like, Well, we play sports and we love that and we have intentional reasons why we do it, but like that's busy. And then we're involved in things in our own lives. Like we have friends and we have uh, church involvement. And I travel for work. And in the last month, we've had a couple trips, including an out-of-state. I'm gone for multiple nights and days. Like that's a lot for Anna to carry and then me to come back and jump right back into speaking. Um, We have work, by the way. And oh, like at some point, we want to actually see our kids and do that whole discipling thing and like just be with them because we like them. And then Anna and I want to see each other and actually like go on a date so that we can talk full sentences. Uh, Or in this case, we went on a date and I didn't talk at all. She got to do all the talking because I didn't have a voice. (laughs) But like, those are like, I know I like, I'm also an adult who likes to do stuff. Like I have goals. I would love to be able to exercise. Like that would be fun. (laughs) At some point I got that chance. So when we talk about being intentional with our time um, and intentional in this season, it means doing more than just being busy or getting through it. I do not want us to throw away the cool opportunities we have in front of us. So first, I want to challenge us to be amazed. In this season, today, once you take a moment, it takes time to be amazed. Uh, I think of it in terms of like when we go to the woods out here in the Northwest, we have some amazing woods. You go to the woods and you see a tree and you can be impressed. Like, that's a very cool tree. And then you walk by. You might study a tree and you can be informed. You can learn lots of fun facts about trees and about the area and how much water they drink in a day and how tall, how long do they live. But you have to really be around a tree for a bit before you start to feel a little small and a little finite. Like, it doesn't take long to be like, you know what? That We did this this summer when we were camping. Like, 
hey, buddy, this tree was here 400 years before our country was founded. <laughs> like, that's how long this tree has been here. Like, that's how finite we are. And like, we feel like our country has been, and now, fair enough, America's barely been here a blip in human history. But like, that's an old tree. And oh, by the way, that's just this tree. Like there were trees here before this one that have already died and become the dirt that you see around here. Uh, that's cool. Like it takes time though. You can't just do that when driving by on the freeway. You can't do that uh, with just a quick glance at a picture. Like you could be impressed. You could read a book and, and, and be, you know, enthralled with the facts, but it does take time this season to be amazed. And amazement is important because the greater the view of, I would say specifically nature, uh, but it can be people and relationships, but of our place in God's creation, the more aware we are of our mortality and our finitude, <laughs> the incredible uh, small amount of influence we actually have on the greater scope of history, which is a very biblical concept, that God is actually the one moving history and we are faithful within our spot in this garden that he's planted us in. And then that causes us some amazement at God, which then begins to cause us amazement at the gospel, this scandalous message that the God of the universe created people who rebelled. And his response was Genesis 3.15. You rebelled on purpose in a perfect environment. And I love you. I love you unilaterally in your rebellion, as Romans uh, tells us, and as, uh, yeah, Ephesians 2, 1 through 10 tells us, uh, specifically for, but God, because he's rich in mercy, while we were yet sinners, <laughs> loved us. And it says later in the uh, Ephesians 8 through 10, that by grace, we have been saved through faith, not by work so that no one can boast that like this isn't God going, all right, but you're not like as bad as the other ones. Like I, I'm going to save you. No, no. You were as bad as everyone deserving wrath that you are earning for yourself. And God saved you in that. Like that in this season, we should be amazed by that because that's what we're thankful for, for Thanksgiving in America. Uh, like, yeah, we're thankful that like this environment was available to us. And if you go back and read the actual Plymouth rock landing and the, the cool part before that, there's, you have the tobacco farming side of America, uh, col colonialism, and you have an actual like kind of cool story with like the Mayflower and stuff of what was actually going on there was actually pretty neat. Uh, so there is real thankfulness for God's provision. And then since then, that God has still managed to use even the wickedness America has managed to do. Even that has managed to be used to bring glory and to bring um, exposure of our hearts that it's not one new country is finally going to fix the world's problems. It's nope. This country has all the problems of every other country. The solution is still the same solution it was before. Uh, no matter who your president is, no matter who your mayor is, like Jesus is still the solution for our hearts. We need to take time to be amazed at the message of the gospel this season. That's what we're thankful for. And then that's the whole point of Christmas is God's action plan. I love that uh, Sully Lloyd-Jones, Jesus Storybook Bible puts it as the rescue plan. Uh, and that this is God's secret rescue mission to fulfill his promises that he made on our behalf. Uh, and that's, it takes time. So then if we're going to be amazed, being amazed in relationship, if we're taking time to be amazed, we should take time to be present relationally. Uh, this means doing something that takes time. So you certainly like do all the cool, like we're doing lots of cool things, but then we have to say no to some stuff on our calendar and recognize, you know what? We're going to take time to be relational and we're going to, Anna is uh, over Christmas break. Like, hey, I'm going to take each kid out once, 30 minutes, right? not full day, massive extravaganzas, but we're going to go out and get that intentional time. We have this break in our, uh, in our calendar season when sports aren't as busy and all of those things, we're going to make time. And I, I said, sports aren't busy tournaments are starting. Sports are crazy in the middle of that making time. So being relational, relational with our family, relational with our neighbors and relational in our opportunities to serve in our community. Maybe you have a food bank, maybe your church does something. Maybe you can invite friends over Thanksgiving. It's an amazing holiday for bringing in people that aren't family, who don't have people to celebrate with them, to know that communion and relationship with others, which is a major part of being the church, uh, to get out from behind our screens, which can be a great way to hear the gospel like you're hearing it right now, and yet living out the gospel, we want to extend that personally. Um, 
Jesus could have come in a digital age because man, the branding is just so much easier through the internet. And yet he chose to come in a very different season of life when the time was perfect for his life and then his death and resurrection. And we now go forth as ambassadors, yes, to the internet to bring the gospel, but the internet is not where it stays. It needs to extend from the internet to real life action and sacrifice and relationship. And that is something we can do this season in being intentional. To be intentional with people though, we have to be intentional with the Lord. And this is what this is really what inspired this for me is because I can find that huge list of sports and school and work and speaking and discipling and date and like all the good things that happen. And it'll be 9.30 and the kids are in bed. And I'm like, I haven't put my day before the Lord yet. Like I didn't, I didn't do it. <laughs> Like to be intentional with our time this season to get before the Lord. And it doesn't have to be uh, massive. In fact, the older I get, the more I realize our youth pastors were on to something in the 90s when they're like, do a quiet time. Uh, when you journal some thoughts, don't just end, do your thoughts. Like you need some scripture to direct your thoughts, but it doesn't have to be huge. In fact, when I'm taking time to be before the Lord, I will often just write down a couple things like this is what I need to do, and I guess I'm conflating three and four here, but getting before the Lord requires having a plan. And having a plan doesn't necessarily mean you have to write down every minute of the day. We've talked before about jots, planning your day in 30 minute increments. How much time are you going to sleep? Okay. How much time are you going to eat? How much time are you going to commute? How much time are you going to be serving and, you know, loving your family? Those are like your top priorities. All right. Where in this are you going to put some time before the Lord? And a 30 minute jot is great, but as your night, your youth pastor might have told you in the 90s, uh, you can do a lot in five minutes. Like my three things before I brush my teeth, if I'm being intentional and I, and I write this down the night before, it's simply, or it's, I say before I brush my teeth, before I eat breakfast, I want to brush my teeth. Uh, I want to, what is it? I brush my teeth, I read a psalm, uh, and I journal or journal pray. Uh, so journaling, not just this is what I feel about my day, but like that psalm as applied to my life, experience bringing that gospel to bear because I need to be reminded of that first or I enter my work day feeling like it's up to me. Like I know what I was called to do, but I forget sometimes that I have no power to do it effectively. <laughs> like by no power, I mean, I'm a talented speaker. The Lord could take my voice tomorrow. As I've never been more mortal than this last week when I was like, I don't like I could write, but that's not what's driving this. Like my ability to get in front of people and share this passion the Lord's given me for them to be equipped to raise kids in a tech world, to see you listening to this, uh, equipped to love your kids and teach them how to love God and use tech. Like that, I'm passionate about that. And speaking is my mode. And the Lord takes my voice. Well, I'm no less equipped to do this work. Uh, if the Lord's called me to it, and hasn't given me the voice to do it. Like, I'm going to find another medium. I'll type it all up. <laughs> I don't know. I'll write the words for someone else to speak. Like, if I'm called into the space, I'm going to do it. Uh, it isn't relying on me being good enough or having the right words or, you know, being a hard enough driver. Uh, I love the, oh, no, who was it that said it? I'm sorry. I'm going to forget the person, but said that when, uh, in speaking about how the Lord provides even for the sparrows, he points out that, yeah, the sparrows still have to go look for the food. If, and this must be Lewis, that the Lord not providing the food means the sparrow could look until it dropped dead. But that when the sparrow goes and looks for food, the sparrow finds food because God provided it. Uh, and that that's the work we're doing. We're going to go out and faithfully do this work, but it's in an order of priority. And given the borrowed 24 hours we get today, what's the most important thing? Putting our hearts and our minds before the Lord, being present with the people God has planted us in, family neighbors, coworkers, strangers in our community, and then taking time to be relational and then to be present and amazed uh, at what the Lord has done in our lives, our testimony, that image of setting up an Ebenezer, a reminder that we point to and say, this is how we've seen the Lord work. We just did it at the dinner table the other day. And our kids, again, are 11, 9, and 5. So just like, hey, where's one area the Lord has provided that we prayed for? And we've seen them. They came up with um, God healed that baby of our friends, which is an absolute miracle. This kid, the twins were born, one was healthy, one was very much not, and they are both chubby and amazing and still have surgeries and hard times ahead, but like the Lord has given us these months with them 
That's a praise. And our kids get to see that. Uh, I got to share like the Lord opened doors for me to speak. The trip I just went on was an open door. I didn't go knock it down. It wasn't because of a great marketing campaign. Like I got an email when I said, how did you find me? The guy's like, I don't know. <laughs> what? Like there's someone like you didn't just find me from Wisconsin. Like I don't know anyone in Wisconsin, uh, but like th that's the Lord opening doors. And that's such a blessing to be able to do. Um, and I'm so grateful for the chance to share that with my kids. Like this work isn't working because your dad is smart enough. Even though Owen did the other day uh, tell me that he thought I ruined Dude Perfect single-handedly by talking about video games. So DP gaming ended. <laughs> and, uh, I was like, thank you, son, for thinking that I'm important enough to actually like mess up Dude Perfect. But if you're not familiar with Dude Perfect, it's like a YouTube group who does silly trick shots. Uh, and they had a whole gaming thing. And then they quit doing gaming. And he was convinced that it was because they heard some of my content and were like, we shouldn't play video games. Like we're doing the wrong thing. Thanks, bud. I appreciate that. Uh, so even though my son thinks that, like I'm not great enough to make this work work. Uh, the Lord is, and we're going to be faithful in it. And that is what I want for you this season. I want you to be intentional with the time you've got. Have a plan. It can be as simple as before I eat breakfast, I'm going to brush my teeth and spend five minutes reading a Psalm and I'm going to journal, uh, journal, what the Lord is placing on my heart from reading the scripture about who God is and who I am and what I'm called to do because of that. And in that, then go out and serve beautifully. Uh, I think I'll end on this. This season is a season we can get burned out easily. Have you ever been just so tired? Because you've been giving, you've been doing good stuff. I went through that list of sports and family and school and prep and holidays and exercise and dating. I was on a on this work trip and, or actually this entire last two weeks of work trip and then multiple talks followed by more talks coming. And I get emotionally fatigued. I don't know if this makes sense, but I'll try to explain it. I think moms get this a lot. I don't know if, I don't know if this is common in guys, but uh, like you gave so much that like you want to do certain things and you just don't have the ability to like do it. <laughs> and my, like, I, I know the email I have to send, or I know the talk I have to write, or I know like the thing I have to do to prep. And I just don't have the emotional energy to do it. And this is when I run to YouTube and chocolate chip cookies. Uh, and on a good day, I might run to exercise, but like, these are my things that I'm like, I just, I physically can't open that next email. Like I don't have the emotional energy to deal with one more thing. Uh, and in those seasons, what I know is that if I went to the Lord in prayer, and just said, Lord, I'm, I'm anxious. I, I don't, not even about anything bad, but like, I'm anxious because it's working. I'm anxious because there's stuff to do. Help. I get one of two things. I either get great peace so I can rest, or I get renewed strength to go and do that good thing that I'm supposed to do. And I know that in my own strength, what I tend to do is go watch cycling videos on YouTube, tour to France, takes no effort, right? Like just to, I, airsoft videos, like whatever thing is on the YouTubes, I'll watch it. I'll watch rules on how to play a board game, like because it's effortless and it's there and I can just wean some success from someone else's, you know, events and I don't have to invest anything to achieve said success. Uh, it's easy and effortless, but it's not renewing and it's not rejuvenating. And this season, I want more than just survival force. I don't want to just end up January 10th and go, all right, life can begin again. I want us to be intentional with our time, to recognize we have these 24 hours of borrowed time, and we're going to use this time to God's glory for all the days we've got. Um, and I, I, I will share this. I have uh, dear family friends, amazing supporters of our organization and ministry, some of the very first people when we're like, we have kind of a crazy idea. And they're like, we're there for it. Um, they just tragically passed. Uh, we're going to the memorial this weekend. And I mean, tragically, like unavoidable accident on a road, just ridiculous. Uh, and recognizing like, the they loved Jesus and were involved in their community. And um, it's going to be a celebration of life because they were both incredible humans who served and loved the world Lord well and gave their resources generously and their time generously and uh, raised up beautiful humans and grand humans. Like they, they did their time right. And yet they didn't leave on their terms. Uh, they didn't leave in old age. Uh, they didn't leave of natural causes per se. Uh, it was a tragic accident. Um, and that is a reminder. I know it's heavy and I 
wasn't going to bring it up because it's the holidays. We're supposed to stay happy, but it's the holidays, which is one of the most depressing times for people. Like, this is when people deal with depression. This is when people feel the most lonely. This is when people are facing their mortality and saying, is this actually what I want to do another year of? And the answer is not get them fancy gifts. The answer is show them the best gift that this holiday is supposed to remind us our thankfulness for, that God so loved the world that he sent his only son, that whoever believes in him, whoever puts their faith in Jesus as Savior, yes, to change our hearts, and Lord, to call the shots on a daily basis. It, it needs to be both. We don't get either or. We, he needs to be our Savior, the one who saves us, and our Lord, the one because we're now living on borrowed time, calls the shots. Uh, then each day is a victory, and each day is a celebration, and each day, even if that's our last one, is an opportunity to give God glory and to receive the good he has in the hard times and the good times. And my prayer is this season will be intentional with our time. Uh, the time we have to, uh, I'm, I want to make sure I get this right. The time we have to be amazed, to be relational, to be with the Lord and to be intentional with our priorities, uh, to put the first things first and then to live from those first things with whatever else the Lord might take us into. So I hope this is encouraging. Uh, I'm, I'm going to sign off for my voice completely quits. Uh, and if you have any questions, you can reach out Nathan at gospeltech.net. Uh, as we look at the next year, if you want to run a workshop with your church or school or whatever, I would love to be a part of that. Um, we can talk about, I mean, anything from how your school goes phone free to how we deal with smartphones, video games, and pornography to how do we make tech safe at home. Um, youth conversations about using the best tech and about hope are also options. Uh, you can go gospeltech.net and just click on the speaking button and that'll get a hold of me too. Uh, you can check us out on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube at Love God Use Tech. And then you can share this with someone who could be encouraged and know that these resources are out there. And I strongly encourage you to check out our Instagram because we're trying to make that a quick landing spot. Uh, so that's at Love God Use Tech. You don't need to be on Instagram to find it just through Google. But our highlight buttons uh, at the top are where we're just we're posting multiple times a week, trying to get resources because it was basically visit the website and then listen to a 30 minute podcast. We're like, man, but what about the people that are just going to the internet before they go to God with a concern or a problem or a question? We want them to find loving, intentional, gospel centered resources. And that's what we're trying to do in those highlights there. So we'd love your thoughts on what else we could do there on how we could make that a better resource, something you could use, or you could send to friends who need resources that are quick, accessible, 30 to 90 second, uh, and good enough to get you on your way, starting to love your kids right where they're at in the hope of the gospel. So uh, thank you all for listening. Thank you for being here. And uh, please join us next week as we continue this conversation about how we can love God and use tech.